everyone, how's it going? Welcome to Adobe Live, and also welcome to day four of the Adobe Express Bootcamp. If we're just meeting, my name is Katrina Torrijos, and I am the Adobe Express Evangelist. Um, I'm also a content creator on the side as well on YouTube and on Twitch. And so for today's session, we are going to be talking about tips and tricks for using your brand. So, you know, Jordan, the past weeks, like, or past weeks, well, past days she went over like how to build a brand kit um, how to make uh, playlist covers and um, also how to use templates so we're gonna be touching on a couple of those topics as well just in case this is your first day tuning in um, so we'll be building a brand kit and then working from a template and I'll also be showing you some some tips for using your brand in your projects but first we're gonna do a quick shout out in chat hello Sean hi uh sam hello gareth hi monica hi oliver how's it going hi clever i'm so excited to be here today i'm also i'm also being very ambitious i am watching twitch chat and i'm also watching youtube so hello to everybody over there as well um and yeah we just have a really big party today for this boot camp so let's go ahead and jump on over to my screen um so here we are in Adobe Express. Um, okay, so first we're going to set up the brand kit. So we are going to just go ahead and head over to the brands tab over here, and then it'll open all of our brand kits that we have. So we have a bunch here, a lot that I did on Adobe Live, um, but if you're seeing this for the first time, you know this is where you can set up a brand so you can load in all of your logos, um, really any imagery that you have that represents your brand as jordan mentioned you don't necessarily have to put in a logo you can you know if you have stars or sparkles um rainbows trees plants any kind of like brand imagery that you like to use in your projects you can upload them there as well um, you can also add in your own fonts and colors and stuff um, but we're just going to go ahead and do that so we're just going to go to create a brand I'm just going to walk us all through this process. Um, so let's go ahead and go to upload your logo. We're going to click on it, going to click our brand kit and then find where we're doing this. Hold on. Primary logo. Um, we'll upload this one and then boom, it shows up. And then next we are going to pick a color. And the good thing is that um, when you upload a logo, it have, if it has a lot of colors in it, it actually will extract the colors from your logo up here. Or you can input it manually by putting in a hex color code. Um, hi, Barbara. Welcome to the stream. How's it going? Um, so let's go with this. And then we're going to choose our font. So you can choose any of the starter fonts here if you're just setting up your brand kit for the first time or you can upload your own fonts. In this case, I do have my own font. So we're going to go ahead and upload it. Gonna acknowledge that we have licensing to use this font and then we're gonna hit continue. And we're just gonna let it do its thing. And then the live update or preview will update, yay. And then we're going to hit next and then got to give it a name. We'll call this Katrina brand. Yay. Okay. So we're going to create the brand and then it's going to upload or put, you know, put the brand kit together. Um, okay, cool. And then this is what the brand kit will look like. And we have a couple questions. Um, I have a question from YouTube, Switchy Fox. How long did it take to make those logos of yours? I actually outsourced my logos to a designer in the community. Um, the person who did my branding, her name is Shine Webster, and she is a, a, an Adobe Express ambassador. So you might have seen her around on the YouTube channels. She's definitely been on Adobe Live before and, and um, done some talks at Max. So definitely check out her work. She's amazing. Um, Barbara said, is this the place to be? Yes, there are th there are three different places to be <laughs> right now. We are on Behance, on the Adobe Express YouTube channel, and on Adobe's Twitch channel. 
Um, okay, cool. So this is what the brand kit looks like. And then from there, you can upload more logos, add more colors, fonts. And then these are kind of like uh, a preview of what your project or branding will look like on different projects. You don't really have to mess with these. I personally don't mess with these and kind of just you know place the logo where I want you know as I'm making the project but you know if you like to templatize everything you know good for you you're you're one step ahead of the game <laughs> that's one less thing you need to worry about and you can go ahead and mess around with these um, and then you can also invite people to your brand so this is great for if you have a team or if you're you know you want to share your brand kit with a friend or a family member whatever the situation is you can invite people just by clicking on this button and then you can just put in their email address here and then they'll get a uh, notification or like an invite and then all they have to do is accept the invite and then they'll be able to use your brand assets so yay super fun super easy and i'm going to show y'all what mine looks like completely set up so pretend we uploaded all of our logos and spent all that time and now we have different variations of my of sub marks um logos badges whatever you want and like i said feel free to add in any sort of brand imagery that you feel um belongs in your brand kit um we have the different colors here fonts um and then this is what my preview looks like and then if i go to invite people Jordan has my brand assets. You know, Jordan and I, we share we share so many different brands together for demo purposes and for real life. <laughs> so it's been it's been fun collaborating with her on a couple projects. Okay, so now we are going to go ahead and work from a template and apply the brand assets and then kind of go over um, you know some different tips or whatever and you know let's just let's just have some fun. <clears throat> um let's see. We have stuff uh, happening in chat. Hello, Rob. Welcome to the stream. Um, Barbara said, hi, everyone. All is well in Music City until it starts raining. Oh, my gosh. The weather has been crazy in the Bay Area. Like, we apparently we got snow last week, and that has never happened um, in a long time, in a very long time. So, yeah. Okay, so we were looking at some templates, and oh, look. All of um, the templates updated to the March templates. I like it. Okay, so we're gonna start from something simple and then like really turn it into something on brand. So we're gonna start from this one uh, that says, uh, looks like it's an Instagram story. It says serving spring looks. So we'll just go ahead and click on that. And then we're gonna let it load. Awesome. Oliver said, the place to be. <laughs> and it has the B symbol of Behance. I love that. That's <laughs> that's funny. Um, Switchybox on YouTube asked, does the invite work for Yahoo or Outlook emails? It works for any email that is attached to an Adobe account. So that's one thing I forgot to mention. As long as they have an Adobe account, they'll be able to access the assets. Um, okay, so we have the template pulled up, so we're going to go ahead and just go through where the brand kit comes in play because there's actually a lot of different areas. So here we have the logos tab. So of course, all of your logos will be displayed here. Um, the primary logo will always be at the top and the primary logo just essentially means the first logo that you uploaded. So that one will be at the top. Um, and then... <clears throat> if we click on an area that we can change the color of, so like let's say like the text or any shapes or the background, if you click on the color box, your brand will always be at the top as well so that you don't have to, you know, um, search for it or upload it or upload it. What, what was I saying? Input it, um, the hex color code from scratch every time. So that's cool. Um, and then, so we have some grouping here. So let's go ahead and ungroup. That's one tip that um, Jordan mentioned the other day was that a lot of the templates will come grouped. So if you're ever like clicking around, you're like, why can't I click this image? Um, it's because there's a group or like a weird layering order. All you have to do is really 
like just use the layer panel to see where you're at. And sometimes this is how I'll select assets as well if I'm not sure where the order is. So if I want to like ungroup all of this, I'll just click on that layer and then hit ungroup. And then now all of the layers are um, individual again. <coughs> okay, so now we are going to edit. Okay, we're gonna edit this text. So we'll just click it on it on the layer and then we'll go to the color tab. So the colors again are, are up here. And then for the fonts, all of the brand fonts will be located at the top here as well, or any fonts that you have uploaded. Um, and if in case you don't see your brand fonts up here, you can always click add fonts and then you'll be able to upload more fonts as you go along. So yeah, there's that. And then the last place where your brand kit, or actually a couple more places. So there's the colors tab. Um, as well so your brand color palette will appear here and if you click on it it'll randomize the colors but we'll get into that a little bit later and then when you go to design there's a one click apply brand button here as well and there's like a little trick that I'm gonna show a little later but um, a lot of folks actually don't use this apply brand because something funny happens and I will show you what that funny thing is in a little bit but okay so let's go ahead and just make this thing on brand <laughs> for, for lack of better words. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, <clears throat> change up the text here. So, oh wait, actually, before we do that, let's duplicate this so I could show like a little before and after. This is one thing that I keep forgetting to do on Twitch. Every time I work on templates, I always work off of the original and not save uh, the original template and then from there if I want to show before and after it's like too late <laughs> so that is a tip if you're ever like demonstrating express and you want to show before and after remember to um, save the original template okay so let's go ahead and change the font here um, and then we can change the color maybe let's go with a purple <clears throat> um, and then we can just easily change all the assets to purple. Also, although this blue is a really pretty color, I like it. And we have this text down here. Where is it? There it is. And then we can change this to our paragraph text. So we could make this on brand as well. So that's cool. Um, and then we'll change the color. We're just going to change it all to purple, you know, it, because I know that once we change the background, it's going to, you know, the whole thing's going to change anyways. Okay. So here is what we have right now. Um, let's see. Um, okay. I keep getting punked by this box being the top layer. So I'm just going to go ahead and bring it down below the text. <laughs> okay. So here we go. So now we're going to put this all on one line and let's see how that looks. Ah, uh, it's a little too small. I regret it. <sighs> let's do something like this. And then maybe we could stylize the text a little bit. Um, okay, wait, we have a question in chat. If you don't mind me asking, oh, switchy box on YouTube. <laughs> I need to say where it's from. Um, if you don't mind me asking, what is it like being an evangelist? It comes up when searching your name. Oh, yes. So I am the Adobe Express evangelist. And honestly, it's really fun. Um, it gets a little busy at times. Um, you know, with streaming, a lot of my job is actually streaming, but also um, going to live events. So this past two weeks, I went to Arizona, and then last week I went to San Antonio for different Adobe Express events. Um, and it gets a little crazy because, you know, it's a lot of speaking, it's a lot of doing like workshops like this, um, but also... Um, it's, it's really great because I get to meet a lot of you all in person, and that's kind of like what keeps me going in a sense um and you know it's really fun 
meeting you all and doing live or like hearing live feedback on express and seeing how excited you all are and everyone showing off their work um and it's really fun um but yeah that's kind of that's that's a really like small snapshot of what I do besides streaming I also create a lot of social content and I also have you know my daily my daily work things like going to meetings and stuff so um but overall I think it's a really fun job and I really like it um okay so what I did here <laughs> is I like to do my this is my favorite text effect and that's adding a shadow and an outline and what I did was I selected the brand color that I was doing or that I had in my brand kit but I made like a darker version of it just by like bringing it bringing the little color slider thing down so that it's a darker shade but still like roughly in the same color family um okay so that looks good and now we're gonna change up the imagery um, you know, what? I'm going to move this down all the way. <laughs> okay. So we're going to click on the image. We're going to hit replace. And then from here, the photo panel opens up and then, you know, as express users, you have access to the entire Adobe stock, uh, photo collection. Um, and I don't, I think some folks, whether, I mean, whether you're a free user or a premium user, of course, premium users get into access to the entire collection, but the free users have also like a generous collection as well. Um, so it's like, as you can see, it's not just like one or two images, but you know, y'all get a good amount of photos to work with as well. And also another power tip for like, um, having imagery in your brand is that, um, what's it called? Sometimes you don't have access to a photographer all the time, you know? And there are days where I have to do, like, there are days where I don't have any photos to use for my Instagram. And that's where stock photography honestly comes in clutch, especially like in my work and designs and stuff. Um, specifically the travel posts because there are a lot of times where I cannot get like crispy shots of a place that I'm at so then I'll pull in stock photography to help complement um, the content that I'm trying to put out you know and all of these are resources for you to use um, and don't shy don't shy away from stock fo uh, photos oh another cool way that I like to use stock photography is mock-ups um, there are I do have a couple streams of uh, me using mock-ups to put like logos and stuff on uh, different products like hoodies uh, hats and um, takeout boxes <laughs> so um, go ahead and check out that VOD if you're interested um, okay photos so we're not gonna use a stock photo of me today I'm actually going to pull in from my Lightroom um, because I like to use Lightroom to edit all edit and store a lot of my photos so we're just gonna go ahead and do that and then we're gonna add um, a photo from my brand okay so let's go ahead and okay I always use these photos so let's go ahead and use this one and then, oops, I forgot to replace this photo, but that's okay. We could just go ahead and get rid of it and put me on there. Wow. It also helps that uh, this is a very like spring-like photo, even though I took it, I think, September of last year. I don't know. Anyways, I think this looks really cute, um, but we have to take it uh, one step further so this is definitely a good way to like use your brand right um you know we uh what's it called we replaced all of the assets and changed all the colors manually but now I'm gonna show y'all how to do this even quicker <laughs> so um let's go ahead and I duplicated the page just so we have you know this iteration saved um so <laughs> now, here is where we can use the apply brand. Um, so 
this is usually what happens when you click on the design, right? The design tab and you hit apply brand. And I get a lot of comments. Oh, actually I didn't do it this time. Oh, never mind. Okay, what's up, what was supposed to happen was it was going to just use the primary color palette. So let me actually walk us through this. Wow, it actually surprised me today. Okay, so usually this color palette will be at the top, right? Um, of a project. Now, once you go to the design tab and hit this, you'll only get a variation of your primary color. And that's where a lot of folks are like, oh, like this doesn't use all my colors, right? Um, so what actually you need to do, this is the pro tip, I just figured this out, was if you go to the colors tab and select, actually select your brand color palette, and then you go to design, then it will cycle through your brand colors. I know, I know, I, it took me forever to figure this out. And if you are already in chat and you figured this out, then good for you. But also, why didn't you tell the rest of the class? <laughs> Particularly me. <laughs> but in case you didn't know, this is a this is how you use the apply brand and how you get it to use your um, entire color palette and not just the main color. So, yes. So I actually really like this. And then it automatically put my logo at the top, which is cool. I like it. It's very bright. It's giving me citrus vibes. <laughs> um, let's see. But yeah, I think, you know, we can we can. Uh, Spruce this up a little bit. Okay, so just a miscellaneous tip. I think I, this is the point of the stream where I'm just gonna start throwing out random tips here. But so when your logo appears here, um, when you're in the brand kit, this is kind of where the templates come into play where you can actually tell or you, you can actually determine where you want the logos to pop up on your projects. Um, before you hit that branding button and for me it's gonna it's set up usually at the top right corner by default so you know going back to the brand kit that's where you can edit that um, but now if you want to move your logo around um, the project there you know there are some areas where you should and should not put a logo for example this is an instagram story right so you definitely want to avoid putting anything up at this top space right here because the overlay where your name is um it it will cover it it will cover it and then if you put anything on the bottom here the the send a message overlay will be on top of that so where you actually want to put your logo will have to be closer to the center somewhere maybe you know where it's where i have this text here maybe i can move it up here and then kind of like swap them a bit so bring it up here just so that you can ensure that your logo will be seen um, and then you know of course we have to work with the new spacing um, of this new text because now you can't see it so maybe if we just add an outline here something like that make it a little bit easier to be seen and then let's zoom in a little bit actually. So yeah, maybe something like that, or even, you know, if you ever find that your text is kind of hard to read, think about adding an outline or maybe a drop shadow or even adjusting the letter spacing because any of these, uh, you know, a combination of any of like these effects can really make a big difference on if your text can be legible or not. So let's see, let's try the drop shadow. And like the goal for your text is really to just, you know, if it's in a busy background like this, you really want to just lift it off of the background. And which brings me to font recommendations. Like, let me actually update this preview. Let's get out of here, click it. And then, so the great thing about font recommendations is this is essentially a live preview of all of the text, like in context. 
so like you can actually see what the font looks like um <clears throat> against the background which is great for if you don't have a brand font quite yet, if you're not completely settled, or if you're just looking, or if your brand font doesn't work, and then you have to choose something else on the fly, you know? This is a great way to um, find a font that works. Okay. Let's see. <clears throat> Okay, so this is looking pretty good. Let me... Uh, am I pressing the right button? Oops, never mind. Oh, I was, I was definitely pressing the wrong button. Okay. So if we're looking at this... Okay. And then... Let's actually... Do I like this? Do I like this? I'm not sure, but we're gonna keep it for now. <laughs> Anyways, um, the great thing, that's an, okay, another pro tip. So a lot of folks in Express, when they go through the color palettes, no matter which one, a lot of the times they think they are committed. They're in a committed relationship to the color palette and they gotta just keep shuffling until you know they land on a combination that they like but that's actually not the case at all and we're just going to use this template to you know mess around with some of the features but if we go into color palette and let's say let's let's pick you know our current colors right or yeah 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 let's do it okay <laughs> so you can actually go in and look at these individual colors and then when you click on one, I think it works. Hold on. When you click on one, let's pick one. Let's pick the orange. When you click on ones, yeah, see, this is what's supposed to happen. If you click on one of these colors, it will automatically like update. You know, it will change everything in that color. So yeah, so all of the blue turn to pink and then all of the purple, let's say I'll change it. Oh, I didn't change it. I guess it, the text doesn't work, but for all of the assets, it'll change. <clears throat> yeah, for all of the different asset colors, it will change, but I guess not the text. So if there's anything that you want to change, you can actually swap out the colors individually for some of the assets. And then for the text, if we just click on it, we can just go in and manually change it ourselves. So we can even make this match this top text right here. So let's go ahead and do that. Then I actually don't think the purple is gonna work on this one. Um, but we can do like a darker purple so it will still stick out, but still be on brand. <clears throat> and we can adjust the drop shadow and the outline a bit, or even actually, just kidding. I thought of a new pro tip. <laughs> a lot of these, a lot of these tips are just coming as I, I, I'm going. Um, okay. So text, <laughs> text is another thing. Okay. So a lot of the times, oh shoot, I almost ripped off my headphones. Okay. <laughs> a lot of the times <clears throat> when, um, you know, you're building a brand kit, you really should have two fonts, really. You should have like a, a display font, so something that's like big, stylized, a little bit flashy if you want, and then you should also have a paragraph text font. So that is essentially things for like longer paragraphs, longer blocks of text, um, you know, things that, <laughs> you know, text that's, that's lower on the hierarchy, okay? So... <clears throat> 
So for example, serving spring looks, that's like the title of this post, yay. So of course we'll use our big display font for this. And then for this bottom text over here, we should change it to our paragraph text, which is Leto. Uh, of course, you know, you do not have to, you know, if it makes sense for your project or your brand to just use your display font, um, go ahead. I'm not here to limit your creativity, <laughs> but this is what essentially works for me. And I think, you know, since changing this text, it actually, I'm sorry, I, this was actually the missing piece of you know, why I didn't really like this graphic as much. So, yay, go me. <laughs> okay, so now we'll just change it to white and then let's zoom out. Let's see what we're working with. Okay, cool. Okay, so this is looking pretty good. Um, so now let's actually save this version and then let's work with another one and then kind of go through this in a different approach. So we did the design, right? The one click brand button, the one click apply, apply brand button. But now this is kind of like another way to switch up the color palettes, but to stay on brand. <laughs> and so... Essentially, it's almost like the one click apply brand. However, the difference between these two um, is when you click on the design tab, the apply brand will actually apply your logo and your font. If you just want the colors of your brand, you just go to the colors tab and this will just replace the color palette. That's another question that I always get is what is the difference between the two? And that's it. This one only changes the colors. The other one um, pulls in your font and your logos. So we're just gonna go ahead and cycle through. This one looks pretty good too. I like this one, um, except this logo needs to be replaced because of the contrast, which is another thing. When you are using multiple colors, make sure there's enough contrast between um, each color because the less contrast there is the harder it is to read the graphic um especially when it comes to text i don't know i've just been these days i've been really big on making sure my designs are like easy to read and easy to make sense of like there's no strain in the eyes so i've been really practicing on that front having more contrast in my designs. <clears throat> okay. Checking in with chat. Clever says, it's like we're making it up as we go. We really are. Anika says, serving Luke's. I like. <laughs> yes. Hello. How's it going? Uh, David said, great work. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um... Let's see, Switchybox on YouTube said, usually my display font is brush script and the paragraph font being either uh, a Haroni or Sego. Yes, exactly, exactly. Um, and then on Twitch, the Reverend Puck, <laughs> you know, you're giving away a lot of pro tips for free, just madness. I mean, <laughs> yo, I think education should be free <laughs> you know I you know and I, I don't like to gatekeep any of my express tips I've worked in express for quite some time now and there are a lot of different things that I've learned that just you know make my workflow a lot easier you know <laughs> and uh, there's a lot and it surprises me to think or to know that what I thought was very intuitive or like I thought people would know already that a lot of folks are still just learning. So I like to just always start from the beginning, break it down step by step, all that stuff, and then throw in some like fun tips or tricks here. 
um, to like clarify any questions and you know hopefully have y'all discover something new about Express. Um, okay, so speaking of more pro tips, I there there's more. There's more. Okay, so we have a bunch of stories, right? D different versions. We started with this and then this and then this and then this. Okay, so now we are actually going to go ahead and create a couple different sizes or yeah, create a couple different sizes here. So we're actually going to one click resize this post and we'll, you know, we'll do an Instagram portrait, you know, and this, there, there's not really much to do with branding in this part with resizing. A lot of it is just re-optimizing your assets to, you know, make sure it fits the canvas. <clears throat> and then same thing, you know, just moving things around making sure it works for the new graphic size. So for this image, you know, it was optimized for stories. So we can go ahead and change the crop of the photo um, to a portrait size so that it like fits a little bit better. And then we can just move it like so. Serving spring looks, yes. <laughs> I mean, I could have changed this title. I really could have, but you know, for the sake of demonstration purposes and this dress, this vibe's pretty springy, so we'll, we'll keep it for now. <laughs> Hi, Caleb. Welcome in the stream. Um, what are we doing? We are learning how to uh, use your personal brand in a project. I almost forgot what the topic of today's stream was. I'm so sorry. Um, but we are <laughs> learning how to apply your brand assets to your project. And also, I'm going over any, like, quick tips, tricks, hacks to make your post more on brand and how to use your brand assets more efficiently when you're creating. Um, let's see, Eric asked, but then the logo font is a separate text as well. Yes, so this is um, an image. So this is my my logo, but it's, you know, it, it uses my brand font, but it's, it's an image file. So it doesn't get affected by the brand kit, but we can also use a different logo as well. So let's go in and maybe use this one. And then from there, we can maybe put it in the corner here. Also being mindful of any overlays that'll happen. Like since this is meant to be an Instagram post, um, you know, the overlay, definitely the dead zones you want to avoid putting a logo or anything is this bottom corner right here, because this is where like the tagged overlay goes anything up here, because this one, there's like a little icon that'll show where the, um, the, if it's a carousel or not, um, or even like a reel. Um, so just being mindful of where these little overlays are will make such a big difference. Okay, and then even, I feel like we can change this up too. There you go. So something like this is great. And then now we're gonna do this again. And then we're going to resize it again for Twitter. What do my notes say? Yes. Twitter. <laughs> Twitter will be next. So for Twitter posts, we have to be a little bit different. And I guess this come, this is part of the personal branding talk because not every graphic can be designed the same. You know, you, we, this layout works, but you know, on Twitter, you know, we have a bunch of different, or we have a bunch of like blank space over here that we need to optimize. And I just think that like, yeah, the one click resize tool is great, but a lot of the expectation that comes with it is that the assets will move and re-optimize themselves, you know? So, but that isn't the case when you do use the one click resize tool. And I think depending on your brand and depending on, you know, your design style and aesthetic, definitely play around with how you want to like reposition your assets so that like, you know, every Twitter graphic looks the same. Every Instagram story graphic looks the same. Um, but yeah, that's just my two cents. 
So we can go ahead and just, I'm just eyeballing these lines. I'm probably not even being accurate with this. Oh, I already messed up. I already messed up, but that's okay. Because Express is very forgiving and you can always undo. Okay, cool. So for this image, we'll actually move this off to the side. Maybe do something like this. And then we can move this text here. Maybe make it bigger. Wow, this could actually be a YouTube thumbnail too. I mean, I wouldn't call a YouTube video <laughs> serving spring looks, but yeah. <clears throat> New stock available now. Yay. We could, this is also what I like to do with my logo. If there's like a border, I will put this on the border. Okay. Oops, zoomed out too much, but okay. So this is what we're going for. I kind of like it. I don't know. What do y'all think? compared to this. It still looks on brand, but the layout is different. And you can tell that it's, if let's say I post the Instagram post and this Twitter post at the same time, you can tell that the posts are related, even though the layouts are different. So, okay. Um, oh, we have some folks on Twitch. Adobe has a channel, yes! Rains Phoenix, Adobe has a channel. Synesthesia, thank you so much for the lurk. Hello, how's it going? <clears throat> uh, Switchybox on YouTube said, can Adobe Express have responsive resize? Responsive resize, oh, like when I resize the window? Like that? I know that the UI for Express itself is responsive, <laughs> but for the design itself, I think, you know, you need to do the one click resize for it. I don't think it'll automatically resize your project. Um, if you change the size of the window. Um, okay, so we have a Twitter post and then now the last thing we're gonna make is a banner and as you can see we are we are just breezing through all of this <laughs> this is going by so fast um okay so let's probably go with let's do a twitch banner let's have some fun okay so um let's see what we're working with here so now we have to re-optimize this graphic for a banner um, give me one second. I need to drink some water. <laughs> no, like resizing the canvas. Um, I don't think so. I think the only way to do it is through this resize tool where if you click on it, it will just resize the, uh, the canvas to the dimensions. You can also, I forgot to mention, um, we have all of these preset sizes, but you can also do a custom size as well. Um, <clears throat> so if there's a dimension that you do not see for your project, you can add it. Okay, so let's re-optimize this graphic for this banner. And then maybe let's do something fun. Let's do something fun. Like, let's see, let's say my Twitch channel is called Serving Spring Looks. It's only active in the spring. Only, I only <laughs> stream during the springtime. <laughs> that is funny. Okay, anyways. Um, so let's just change up this text. This is looking pretty good, but let's, you know, let's do something fun. I like this picture, but it's getting a little tired. We made like what, how many graphics with the same layout? So let's actually see what happens when we remove the background. <laughs> let's go ahead and just do that. 
Okay. Wow. Okay. I was pleasantly surprised. So let's just add this cutout. Let's. Wow. I'm sorry. I just need a second to process. <laughs> I thought the table was going to be in it as well, or like parts of the background, because there were certain parts that were kind of blown out on the photo, but I did a pretty good job. Wow. Okay. Anyways, so here we have a lovely cutout of myself. And then let's zoom out really quick. All right, this is looking pretty good. I like it. Okay, so this is another way to mix up <clears throat> your graphic, um, but we can also take this <clears throat> one step further. It's always one step further with me, I don't know. <laughs> um, so let's actually go ahead and add in a duotone filter. Now, some folks love to use the duotone filter. Um, and you know, I can definitely see why. So we definitely have all of these presets here that you could totally do, right? Nice, awesome. But you can also set them to your brand colors. So if you go in here, you know, one box, I think the one on the right is for highlights, yes. And then the one on the left is for shadows or the darker colors in the photo. So if we set it to, let's say, like this dark purple color, yeah? And then if we set the highlights to something light, like this pink color. Wow, very nice. We, we can even do the blue as well. Um, this is actually a great way to duotone your filters so that they are on brand um, with the colors in your project or in your brand kit. I think it looks so good. And I think that's super fun and creative way to add some creative touches to your photos. And then I think you can pair it up with enhancements as well. So like, let's say you want more contrast or you want this photo to be a little bit more punchy. It is a bit on the muted side, so you can also still adjust your contrast and the brightness, saturation, highlights and shadows of the photo. You can even sharpen it a little bit as well. Let me see. Doesn't need a lot of sharpening. Maybe just like one or two. <clears throat> but yeah, and then once we zoom back out, this is kind of what it looks like now. It looks great. And when we zoom out and look at everything we made, wow, we started from here and we got it down to here. But there's one more thing that I want to show y'all. So let's say, you know, this branding is great, but you want to change all of this, right? But you want to do it all in one go. So there is a way to do that. If you select a project and then, you know, click on the different projects that you want, you can actually one click apply brand to these projects as well granted you know things will change and if there's an edit you don't like you still have to go in individually to go fix it but it will apply the same like effects so see how this photo is duotone of course that's going to stay but all the colors and fonts you know will change it's crazy and then same thing i think with the color palettes you can change the color palette of your projects all in one go. And that is just crazy to me. And now I am going to go through the process of finding something that I like, okay, this one looks good. <laughs> and then, yeah, that is probably my last pro tip. This photo is bugging me, so I'm just gonna go ahead and turn off the filters. <laughs> Because it doesn't match everything. But yeah, as I said, if there's something you don't like, you could just go in and change it back. And then you will be all set. Um, what's it called? Kate says, I love it except the yellow to the right of the photo. I feel like, like, should it be, should we like get rid of it? Like, you know, shorten the box? I don't know. 
I'm um, looking at Behead's Club Preferred Creators. I just you know, really... Oh, content. Nice. Okay. Let's see. Mm -mm -mm. Whoa, the cutout is pretty nice. Thanks. Switchy Fox, thank you. Mega Man 14, hello. Welcome to the stream. I love it. Um, but yeah, so just to recap everything, we have a couple more minutes until stream is done. But, you know, we went over how to build a brand kit. Oh, also, we have time for questions. This is wild. I, I, <laughs> I went through this a lot faster than I expected. So feel free to ask any more questions. But <clears throat> just to recap what we just did today. Um, so we built our brand kit from scratch. You know, we added our logos, colors, and everything. Then we started with a template, which was this one. And, you know, we broke down the template. We changed the colors. We changed the font. Ch um, you know, changed the photo. All that stuff. And then we landed on this, which is cool. We changed all the assets individually. We went over where things were with the logos and the colors, your branded fonts you know, and um, the color palette. And we also did the one click apply brand button. And then after the one click apply brand, we landed on this and which is great. We changed the font. We talked about um, display fonts versus paragraph fonts, um, where to put your logos in the right place and all that stuff. We thought this was a lot of content. This was a lot of content today. And then we did um, another post where we just messed with the color palette and we changed all the fonts individually. Then we one click resized to an Instagram post and then a Twitter post and then a Twitch banner where we ripped off the background and did a remove background. And then, you know, we can add the duo tone back um, and, you know, went over that. Oh, I did that wrong. I did that so wrong. <laughs> And then after that, we went over the one click apply brand on this tab over here where it shuffles through all the brand assets, even through like all the projects all in one go. And you can change up your color palette as well. All in one sweep. That was insane. Okay. <clears throat> it's all amazing. Thanks, Katrina. Of course, Kate. Clever. You <laughs> said pros, pros, pros. Yes, I've very much exhausted all of the knowledge I had in Express. <laughs> I love it. Switchy Box, I really love this experience. Tell out while being fun and informative. Ah, oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Switchy, um, for hanging out. And I'm glad you really loved the content. And also that, you know, that brings us to the end of the stream. Thank you all so much for tuning into this boot camp. If you missed the previous episodes, definitely go ahead and check out the replays. They were all with uh, my friend Jordan. She goes over how to um, set up your brand kit. Um, how to use a template and how to make custom playlist covers. It's super fun and I loved watching this content and I hope um, you all enjoyed today's day <laughs> for the boot camp. And also uh, tune in tomorrow as well. I'll be live again at nine o'clock for an Adobe Express masterclass. So we're gonna talk very similarly again about personal brand, but this time we're gonna throw in how to schedule your content for scheduler. So yeah, with that, thank you so much and I will see you all again next time. Okay, bye-bye.